This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. Today I'm teaching another way to do the smiles and frowns knit one purl one bind off using a needle. And this time, instead of ending the sample with circular knitting, I've simply continued to knit ribbing and put this waist yarn, that is additional ribbing, with yarn that I'm going to discard. So this part of the ribbing from here up is just scrap that I'm going to throw away. And here's my tail of the first yarn and we'll go ahead and get started. Now the smiles and frowns bind off is very very useful in many many situations. So make yourself a sample of knit one purl one ribbing and give this one a try. Now the first thing you have to do is figure out whether you're starting with a knit stitch or a purl stitch. So whatever stitch the yarn is coming out of, that's the one you want to look at. And in my case, I am starting with a knit stitch. And the way I'm going to do it is really very simple. Each knit stitch has a V. It has two legs to the V. These are these stitches that look like this, little V-shaped stitches. And for this first one, I go right in the middle of that V from top to bottom, and I come up in the middle of the next knit stitch V. Let me spread that out so you can see it. And please take note that there is a purl stitch in between that I'm skipping. But I'm going to go here and come up here. In the middle of a knit stitch, come up in the middle of a knit stitch. And I draw my yarn up gently. Just draw it up until it's not dangling, until it closes, but not so that it's at all tight. Now stretch it open and find that purl stitch. The purl stitch is this little bump of my main colored yarn, my brown, showing in between my cream colored waist yarn. So you need to find that and you're going to insert the needle under that bump going toward your main knitting. So my needle is pointing toward the brown knitting, which is my main knitting. And then without taking it out, I pull this open and I find my next purl stitch. See there's my knit, here's my next purl stitch. And I go under that stitch, but I go under it so that I'm going from the direction of the main knitting to the direction of the scrap knitting. And I draw that up, but not tight. Watch, I'm just drawing it until it closes. That's all, just until it closes. Now that was a purl stitch, so I back up. I go back to that last V knit stitch, and I go in the middle of that knit stitch and go under the next leg of the next knit stitch and come up under that first leg of the next knit stitch. Now I'm left-handed. I'm filming it so that if you're right-handed you can do this in the direction that I'm working. You can do it the way the video faces you. If you're left-handed you're going to have to stop and think about it and do it in the direction I'm doing it because I'm sitting across from you. So again, I draw this up, but I do not draw it tight. I just draw it until it closes. Now I just came up in a knit stitch, so I have to back up and go in that same purl stitch again. I pull it open so I can see it. You see this horizontal bar here? It has this yarn sticking out of it from last time. So I go under that bar, and then I pull it open past this knit stitch I was just in to find the next one. And I'm going to go the first one, push in in the direction toward the, the main yarn. And for the second one, I push under it in the direction of the waist yarn. And that is my next stitch. I just pull up until it closes, not tight. So that was a purl stitch. So to back up, the stitch before the purl stitch was a knit stitch. So I go under the second leg of that last knit stitch. By the way, that's the second time I've used that knit stitch. And come under the first leg 
of that next knit stitch. So do you see the next knit stitch? Here are the two legs, right here. So under there and come up there. And just draw it up till it closes. Nothing tight about this. Now that was a knit stitch, so I back up, go under the previous purl stitch, second time I've used it, and I'm pointed toward my main yarn knitting, and then swing my needle around and get under the next purl stitch pointed toward my waist yarn knitting. So it's pointed that way. And then pull up gently. And since that was a purl stitch, the next one's a knit. I back up to the previous knit stitch, get under that second leg, same stitch, but not the leg I used last time, and come up under the first leg of the next one, draw that up gently, and then back up and go under that purl stitch again, in the direction from the waist yarn toward the main knitting, and then go under the next purl stitch in the direction from the main knitting toward the waist yarn. And you can see I'm just repeating from a knit leg to a knit leg. From a purl bar, oh but I don't want the waist yarn, to a purl bar. From a knit leg to a knit leg. From a purl bar to a purl bar. From a knit leg to a knit leg. From a purl bar to a purl bar. Now, as I finish this up, let me talk about the stitch a little bit. This stitch has several very significant advantages. First of all, it's stretchy. This is a good solution for the top of a sock. This is a good solution for a neckband that has to go over your neck. In fact, this is my stitch of choice for socks made on my circular sock machine where the last part of the sock I knit is the ribbing. I just add a few rows of waist ribbing after the main color and I've got myself all set to sew it off this way and it's stretchy. It pulls up over the calf without any problem. Another reason this is a great stitch is it looks good. This is a very nice looking finish, very professional. Another reason this is a great stitch, especially for machine knitters, is because this stitch looks just like a Japanese cast on, which you'll see in a moment when I finish it up. So fast, easy, stretchy, professional looking, pretty hard to beat. I suppose the last thing I need to talk about is what to do when you get to the end. So you just keep following the pattern until you simply run out of stitches. Now I happen to be knitting um, with a knit on either end, so I'm ending up with a knit, but I'm going to go ahead and sew through that purl bar, and because that's my last stitch, I'm following that same pattern, and then I'm just going to go through whatever my last stitch is. So there we go, that last back up and then through the last open loop. And now it's time to unravel the off-white yarn and see this finish. I use lots of waist yarn. That makes everything very secure. I had eight rows there. Here's the finish. Look at that. Really stretchy. Very tidy and professional looking. It actually kind of rolls over the edge of the knitting. I hope you'll make a sample and try this very, very useful ribber bind off.